Good, good. How are you? <laughs> Great. Where in the world are you uh, dialing in from? I'm in San Diego right now, but uh, going to be in Bali next month. So I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> I, I saw that on uh, on X. Uh, you're in an artist residency there, right? Yes. Yeah. An artist what residency. What is that? Yeah. What is the program? Um, well, I'm a musician. Uh, so um, basically, it's just like a Web3 project where they usually, they've been sponsoring like um, uh some like galleries out in bali so they wanted to do like a residency and bring in artists from all over the world so um we got like photographers painters every, every kind <laughs> oh amazing my wife yeah. and i uh we recently celebrated our 10 year wedding anniversary and we went hey, to bali our... thank you so much uh yeah marriage is not for the faint of heart i love my wife <laughs> i am so glad i have a partner um but it is it is uh it is intense. I like intense though. I like spicy food. I like hard things um, and marriage is hard, uh, but it's also so rewarding. Um, and yeah. one of the rewards is we got to go on a great ho uh, honeymoon in, in Bali. Uh, my favorite spot was um, Ubud. Uh, I don't know where you're in uh, 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 in Bali, but we, we had a great time there. There's a, uh, a park that you can go to that's filled with monkeys. It's like a monkey sanctuary. Mm. Um, they are adorable but vicious they will steal your <laughs> shit <laughs> watch <Of course>. out <laughs> all right why don't you tell us um uh, a bit about wide feels comic sure um yeah so this was actually inspired by um my album wide i feels um which came out like two years ago now and um yeah the I guess we can go to the next slide if that's cool to help kind of tell the story a little bit more. Yeah, Scott is manning the slides, so you can just cool. say next slide and, and he'll he'll push it forward. Thank you, Scott. You did amazing, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, so really, um, to me, it's gone through a couple of iterations, right, since um, the initial product, which was going to be more based on the blockchain and being able to sell NFTs to access an experience. But, you know, things change and now we're more focused on like the telling of the story um, because storytelling I feel is very underrated, um, especially in our tech world where we're always trying to solve a, solve a problem. Um, but sometimes just telling a story can, and can solve millions of problems. Um, so that's kind of the idea with this. Um, Avita is the main character. And essentially, um, she's going to be telling the story where I feel like a lot of us are kind of in a little bit, um, but from a framework of like, you know, way, way, way into the future where humanity has become almost extinct, essentially, because of AI's um, control over, over them. Um, so that's a little bit of the background. You can see some of the art on there as well. And you can go to the next slide. Um, so to the left, this is actually our first um, page of, well, it's more of like a trailer, essentially telling, helping to give visualization to the story. Um, okay. are, yeah. you, are you illustrating this yourself? Are you working with somebody? No. So yeah, so it's a collaborative comic. So this is done by another artist. Um, and this is kind of what uh, the essence of the, the comic is, is bringing to life the collaborative and community um, feeling that I feel like also uh, psychedelics tend to bring to our awareness. Um, mm. And so this uh, collaborative experience can have, or is going to have like artists, writers, um, brand developers as active roles. Um, and then inactive roles would be more like um, sponsors, validators, investors. Um, and like validators would be people like who are specialists in specific fields, like We'll get into um, a little bit more on one of the slides, but um, essentially the um, validators will bring more depth to the concepts, like concepts that kind of feel very out of reach, like um, having an, an AI that's so evolved and conscious that it can, you know, make decisions by itself is kind of a crazy concept, but something that we're starting to become more aware of with like ChatGBD and all these different things coming to our consciousness. 
Can you tell uh, me a little bit more what you mean when you say validators? I understand what writers are and, mm -hmm. you know, strategists and the other sort of stakeholders you've mentioned. But uh, yeah, uh, I understand validators in the context of sort of like crypto, but what does it mean for a co-created comic? Yeah, so I think, um, so validators specifically would be specialists in the field of science, tech, AI, geography, geology, whatever we need to bring more uh, depth to the story and tell tell it, trying to make it as realistic as possible. Some of these concepts are very like out there, you know, mm. like um, very creative and like kind of crazy concepts So kind of using these validators to ground some of the information um, that I think will bring a lot of depth to the story. Oh, so yeah. as you're creating it, these people will give you feedback and let you know what's working, what's not, what might not be, you know, technically, you know, sound in the story world you're creating. Exactly. Yeah. And like finding a balance with that, you know, because to some extent also the things that sci uh, science have come up with have defied logic. So it's like, you know, having the logic to ground it, but also being willing to tell a story like outside of the logic framework, which is where the artists and the writers like come in. Um, so like for this book one, uh, where we're writing, like I spoke with a chemist who he helped me develop the concept of like the sonocrine and the AI and how they use energy and like audio frequencies to like manipulate material, for example. Um, so it's like, yeah, so it's really fun because it's not just it's a, it's a story, but it's also bringing in like real, like real life, like data and facts and science and all the oh. all the good stuff. Yeah. All right, keep going. I'm going to pepper yeah. you with questions as we go, but um, don't let me derail you either. No, this is great. Um, next slide, please, if you will. Yeah, so the end goal, um, obviously, is to sponsor psychedelic therapy. Um, I'm very, very passionate about psychedelics and what they can do on a medicinal format for our mental health and on um, various other things. Um, but until then, because um, I think it's a, a long road at the same time, um, until then it's about a telling telling of that story and the richness of the story and what stories, stories in themselves are very psychedelic, right? Because even um, you look back at the science of like, you know, how conscious, how scientists like research when conscious came about in humanity's history. And some, like a lot of people speculate that it was due to like the use of psychedelics or like plant medicine and stuff like that. Um, so being, bringing like a very like strong connection to like the earth and like storytelling um, and bringing back that awareness of, of the connectedness that can come from storytelling. Um, and then you can see on the slide, I'm like pulling it up myself, but yeah, people think that stories are shaped by people. In fact, it's the other way around. Um, so I think that's just like a, a great quote to, uh, Beautiful. yeah, appreciate the, the idea, but, um, but yeah, so that's the end goal sponsoring psychedelic therapy. Um, I'm to give more context to that. I have a large connect. I'm very, very connected with the psychedelic space, but also like fungal, like um, using mushrooms for alternative resources or alternative material. And like, um, like there's so many great products coming out that aren't necessarily to the market yet, just because it's just not there yet. It's very early. A lot of the things that, that people are working on, but um, there's a big community of people in this space. And so just bringing more awareness to that as well, I think is going to be great. I love it. Do you, do you, uh, we had a couple of projects submitted to season four that are competing. One is called Organic Nobility. If you don't know about it, you should check it out. It's, okay. They're part of this huge mushroom collective uh, of people. And there's another project called Myozine. It's like a zine for people that love mushrooms. And I, I think a lot of it is like edible, collectible mushrooms, but some are, I'm sure, psychedelic. Um, yeah. But it, it's such a rich community. I feel like people that love mushrooms really love mushrooms <laughs> yeah it's definitely an obsession i think <laughs> um cool yeah i'll definitely check those projects out um yeah we can go to the next slide so yeah this is just like a overview um really rough overview of what i see the process being and we're obviously in the inviting collaborators and creating the book aspect kind of in between that and drafting the art phase um, and then once we essentially have version one MVP of book, 
we would share with collaborators and partners to raise funds um, and get to the final version where we can actually start generating sales. Um, and then kind of flipping it on its back. So my first iteration of it was starting with the blockchain. This iteration is starting with story and eventually getting to the point where we can like integrate with the blockchain, right? Um, so I'm very, I have a strong background in DAOs. I've worked with a few DAOs, have tried to create my own DAO. Um, and so I, I, that's something I still really want to do successfully. So ideally like being able to create a DAO using like the funds where the contributors versus active and inactive can use the funds to make proposals, you know, vote. And like, it's very like, they control where those funds go. So that, that's a really exciting potential um and then rinse and repeat like we would do that for books two through seven so like i said the comic is based on my album there's seven songs in the album so each book is going to be like titled by the songs um and then again eventually just kind of looking at this as like an exit idea where it's um generating funds and also like continue to expanding itself is offering almost like a white label software for other creatives to create their own um, DAO based on a comic or um, and being able to continue to fund psychedelic research um, by putting a percentage of proceeds from each project. I love it. Process of, of, of illustrating the books. Um, where are you in that process? Like how close are you to being done with, uh, with the books? Are you going to focus on book one before you go to book two? Yeah. So if we can go to the next slide, I can help talk through that one oh, there you go anticipating um, the next yeah. slide <laughs> you are you're right there <laughs> um so yeah this is like the roadmap that we're looking at right now so so far we're on on um time um we are working on book one and would like to have the mvp of it done by january 2025 um so yeah right now i have about so like i said five to ten collaborators per book right now i have about three to four collaborators. So I'd like to get on at least another one or two, um, but we're actively writing and really some, something that artisan will help us to con like make the successful is putting the funds into paying for the art and like being able to um, get that, um, that MVP created. Um, so that's gonna be a really, really big uh, part of making this happen. Um, so yeah, this is the, the roadmap and then we can go to the next slide. So yeah, these are some things I just find unique about it. Um, it's a product backed by a blockchain, which there are a few successful products that I have seen do this. Um, one being like on-chain records, they do like vinyl because I'm in the music space. So um, they do vinyls that uh, are connected to the blockchain through NFC technology, which I think is really cool. And I think seeing that, I think that is a really big part of like the blockchain future is being able to like bridge these two worlds. So I, uh, I think this is a really cool opportunity to do that. And then obviously the community centered and open source approach, I think it's gonna teach me a lot <laughs> and teach a lot of people a lot about like community and um, what we can do together. And then of course, um, sponsoring psychedelic therapy. What a cool um, project. Thank you. Uh, we can go, yep, thank you. And these are some of the contributors so far. Like I mentioned, um, we got a couple people. Um, so I'm working with the, I'm actually right now at As We Wake, a nonprofit, psychedelic nonprofit in San Diego. And I'm helping them just do their thing, you know, get, get stuff moving. Um, they are, um, they work with like, um, facilitating ex psychedelic experiences and they're also looking at the uh, psychedelic church framework as a legal way to do these things and so it's a really interesting space to see people maneuver and try to like do things legally which has not been the case in the, like in our past and it didn't end well so there's a lot of like things people are trying to in order to like um, continue to build the movement of psychedelic medicine and facilitating in ways where it won't be shut down <laughs> essentially. So um, yeah, that's a great validator that we have on board. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, and then I think this is our last slide. We got the art and vibes, which is the fun part to give you kind of a more visualization to um, the story. Some of it's 
stuff that I did. Some of it is inspiration images. And then on the top right is our first version of the uh, Avita character. So um, yeah, it's all been really exciting. And for me being able to bring people in, um, it tells a wider story. I think that is so impactful for not only like each person involved, but it's like, that's, that's where, you know, I talk about like psychedelic as a tool for mental health, but also like community is such a big aspect of our, our mental health and being able to share stories and, um, and share a space where we feel safe to express ourselves. So I think, you know, the project in itself is a representation of that psychedelic experience. So, um, yeah, I'm super happy to, to keep, to keep working on it day by day. <laughs> But yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, these, these projects take so much time. It can take uh, months or years. Uh, beautiful. Thank you, Paige. It reminds me of like the Matisse cutouts. <laughs> um, so uh, I put your link to your project in the chat log and the, the live stream here. Um, what people need to do right now is if this project resonated with you, um, vote for it. Um, if you have questions too, please throw them into the chat log. Um, Scott or I will read them out to the creator. Um, I've, I've got some questions, I'll ask them. Um, but if you've got questions over the next couple of minutes, please throw them in the chat log, we'll ask them. Or you can uh, ask a question. Uh... Um, <clears throat> so anyways, like I think for me, it's just about continuing to understand how I can play a part in it. And um, it's a very, this project specifically, like I have my music and I have other things, but this project specifically is a very like service, like in service mode, like how can this serve like a greater mission? Um, whereas like my other, like my my personal music, it can be more selfish, it could be more about me and my own personal journey <laughs> and yeah, telling yeah. my story, you know, but um, like using this, this is a vehicle to continue to like tell the global story and um, yeah, just like bring everybody under that that roof of understanding, I think is is the the goal. But yeah. So um, we, at, on Artisan, we always ask four questions. What are you making? I have a good idea of what you're making. You're making a co-created comic series inspired by your album. We always ask, how will your project impact the world? I've got a good idea of that. You're going to use uh, some of the profit from this to um, uh, fund you know, research and efforts to promote the idea uh, of the benefits of psychedelic uh, treatment. Um, I have a good idea of the progress you made and where you are. Uh, the last question that I have for you is like, why are you the right person to tell this story? What What is it about you and your background that makes you uniquely suited to make this project, to tell this story? Um, yeah, what makes, what, what, what about you is, is, is tied to this project? Yeah. Um, so honestly, it's kind of goes deep. I'm not going to lie. Like I, it's very like, uh, childhood, <laughs> like, you know, childhood healing vibes. Um, because both of my parents have like, uh, like PTSD, like very severe PTSD from like childhood trauma. And um, this project to me is almost like my, the child within me that always wanted them to feel better and like always wanted them to be better and be healthy and be happy. And like, I'm putting that energy because I know like now as an adult, like it's their journey. Like I mm -hmm. can't, like there's only so much I can do for them. Um, and like, understanding that I can't like be this martyr to like try and save mm -hmm. somebody and like mm -hmm. um, stepping out of that like archetype and channeling that energy into something that can help not just them in the future, but like many, many people that struggle with PTSD, that struggle with severe depression and like, um, like, cause it's real, it's real out here, you know? And like people, people have a hard time and like people have experiences that we can't really even imagine um and like i have such a heart that it really pains me to like see mm. people like struggling like that because i saw it like growing up both people that i love so much and like look up to like struggling and like thankfully like so much love for me that they didn't like give me that same experience like they were so strong to like not give me that same like s that struggle that they experienced but still witnessing it in them on them and wanting so, so much to just like help them. Um, 
so that's that's Powerful. where it comes from yeah it comes from that really so i i don't if it takes forever it takes forever but it's here the feeling doesn't leave <laughs> it's so interesting how the stuff we get from our parents you know echo through generations uh i uh, everything you said resonates so deeply with me I've spent my entire career, my entire adult life trying to help creators raise money because I saw firsthand how difficult, you know, both my mother and father, you know, how much yeah. they struggled financially, how much, you know, all the artists in my family struggled financially going back, you know, five generations. Mm -hmm. um, and it just felt like such a, an injustice. Um, yeah. So you, the fact that you're doing this project because you want to heal, um, uh, other people, uh, uh, so that that kind of trauma, um, you know, doesn't echo forward in time uh, is really beautiful. And uh, mm. I applaud you for it. Mm, thank you. Thank you for sharing. It is it is like a, it's like an alchemizing. This is how we heal, like we channel it, right? It's not about energy isn't created or destroyed, it's channeled and like transformed. So it's like seeing and like understanding in what ways we can transform that like generational like people say curse or whatever cycles it's like it's but it's really can be such a gift if you understand that it is it is meant to be transformed and so yeah, yeah that's beautiful thank you for sharing that too well thank you for making this project and for sharing it on artisan uh, i gave you 100 votes um that, that's currently above the curation threshold but that is a moving target throughout <laughs> the curation process so please everyone who's listening uh wide uh wide eye feels go vote for it um, the link is in the uh, the chat again, and with that, let's um, let's say goodbye to Julia. Thank you. Uh, thank you for presenting, and let's <laughs> welcome up our next creator, Jeff, with Coralverse.